I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Last week, we took a look at the biblical doctrine of closed communion. Uh, you can see that video here. Yeah, that's a, that's a naked troll. Up here is your video on, uh, on the biblical doctrine of closed communion. This week, we're going to talk about how to talk with your friends about closed communion before you get to church. And you want to do that. You want to put your cards on the table and say, hey, I'd like you to come to church with me. But we're celebrating the Lord's Supper, and we believe as Lutherans that you we only commune with those that we have complete agreement with. And since you're going to a different church body, um, then we don't have that agreement that we would like to have, and so we're not going to commune together. Everybody celebrates Thanksgiving in November. Everybody in the United States celebrates Thanksgiving on the same day. But not everybody eats at everybody's house. Um, you eat at your family's house and your family, your neighbor may eat at their, their family's house. Um, if you're really close and you have a lot in common, then you may eat at eat Thanksgiving together. But if you don't have everything in common, you don't. Um, that's a good world example of what we believe Acts 2, 1 Corinthians 10 and 11 says. Again, that video is, that's a naked troll over here. All right, so... Um, you, you have that discussion with him and you say, look, look, I'm not saying I'm more of a Christian than you are or you're more of a Christian than me. What I'm saying is we don't have agreement in everything. We don't believe, believe everything to proclaim the Lord's death together. And that's what this is all about. At the Lord's Supper, we receive the body and blood of Jesus. We receive the Lord's body and blood. All that he did for us on the cross is delivered to us. And, we, and the Lord doesn't do partial salvation or partial agreement. He does complete agreement. Until we have complete agreement, we shouldn't act as if, we shouldn't lie and act as if we have complete agreement when we don't. And that's what sort of open communion really is. It's it's a deceitful lie. We're, we're all one when we're really not. If we were one, we would agree together and be one. Um, and you want to do this and have this discussion with your friend and you want to love your friend and say, listen, um, I want to do what's best for you. All right, I'm free in Christ to commune this Sunday at my church, but I, um, I'll sit with you if you want me to and sing hymns and we'll talk about what's going on in the divine service and what's going on in communion. Or you could come up with me, fold your hands like this and receive a blessing. Either way, um, I'm going to be with you today and I'm going to, I'm, 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 you're my friend and I'm not going to leave you hanging when it comes to uh, communion. I'm going to go with the flow with you and love, love you more than I love myself. Plenty of places for me to receive forgiveness in the Lord's Supper. I don't have to go to this, the, the Lord's Supper. Um, I can love you and care about your visiting me, uh, too. Um, here, you also want to talk with the pastor beforehand, um, but not to put him on the spot. And what I mean by talk to the pastor, tell the pastor what you're going to do. Hey, I'm not going to commune today. This is my friend. They go to a different church body. Um, we're not going to commune. Or this is my friend. They go to a different church body. Um he's going to come up for a blessing and I'm going to commune. Uh, let the pastor know what's going on because it's good for the pastor to know what's going on because he's the shepherd of the sheep, uh, with the Lord being the chief shepherd. So you want, you want to make sure that you're, you're open with the pastor. You don't want to put the pastor on the spot, though. You wouldn't put, if, you're, if, if, if a heart surger, a surgeon is about to go and do surgery on your father's heart, you're not going to catch them five minutes beforehand, stick a microphone in front of them and ask them about the interior of the heart and all that jazz. You want their tunnel vision focused on the uh, surgery. The same way, you're not going to catch your pastor five minutes beforehand and ask them the doctrine of, the, of close communion and, and put, on, put them on the spot. You want to take the bull by the horns and have discussed it with them beforehand. Beforehand. Um, I don't bring my A game five minutes before the service. My mind's on, on the Lord's gifts and the delivery of the Lord's gifts. I may give a good answer or I may not give a good answer. Don't put me on the spot. Love me enough to um, to have that settled before you come come and talk to me. Now, what about a friend that leaves exactly the same as me, but they go to a different church body? Well, then let's make an appointment to sit down and talk to the pastor. Um, let's take the time to make sure that we're one before we act as if we're one. We want oneness. We the doctrine of closed communion is not, hey, let's only commune with those people that we really like. No, it's it's we have agreement and we proclaim the death of the Lord together, and that oneness is expressed in our communing together. 
Now, if you do a home and away with them, say you're going to their church and they're going to your church, um, you go to their church, you're not going to commune there either because we, again, have doctrinal differences. You're not saying that they don't have the Lord's Supper. We don't do that. We're not going to say, hey, you don't have the Lord's Supper, neener, neener, neener. Um, instead, you let their doctrine speak for itself. And here I'm thinking, I watched Victoria Osteen consecrate, the, well, run through the words of institution. It was sort of strange. But after she waved her hand over the elements and stuff, she said, here's the clincher. She says, of course, this isn't the body and blood of Jesus. We believe it's a symbol. Bingo. Uh, that's why we don't commune. We have this difference. Even though you may be Christian and I may be Christian, um, we don't have this oneness that is expressed in the Lord's Supper, and we don't even agree about this doctrine. Um, this is also, uh, our difference may also show itself at the doctrine of closed communion. You're having this argument with me about the Lord's Supper, and you want to commune, and you're saying that we should commune, but yet we have this difference. We don't agree on this topic. Um, we're working toward unity. We want to have unity. We want to be one, and we'll be one in heaven, but we're not one now. And until we're one, we shouldn't act as if we're one when we're not. Um, what about me? I, should I go to their Lord's Supper there because I believe, you know, it's me and Jesus? Again, uh, you shouldn't commune there because you don't have that vertical unity with, a uh, horizontal unity with them. This is horizontal. That's an, that's in a control. This is horizontal. You don't have that one oneness with them that you would like to have before going to the Lord's Supper. So, Doctrine of Closed Communion, that's a gift. Two top, two two video shorts. One, the doctrine. You can see that video. Um, or this one about how to discuss it with your neighbor in a, in, a, in a loving way. Be loving, be caring, but also confess your faith before men. I'm Pastor George Borkhardt, and this has been another Higher Things video short.